I do have them as pretenders in this top four. They don't belong here. Sorry. Get out of here. Bring in the Mavs, the Grizzlies, or the Warriors. Sorry, Jazz. No disrespect intended. Props to what you've done so far. We're going to move on to looking at the standings right now. Talking about contenders versus pretenders. We'll get the party started in the Eastern Conference here. The Bucks at the time of this recording are 9 and 1. The Cavs are in second at 8 and 2. The Celtics are uh 7 and 3 and the Hawks are tied with them sitting in fourth place right now at 7 and 3 as well. So there's your top 4 in the East. Wanted to also show you guys some division winner odds again from Bovada. Celtics, well, all these teams are favored to win their division. So Celtics minus 200 compared to the Raptors next at plus 500 in that Atlantic division. The Bucks at minus 275. The Cavaliers, um, so they would be the one exception. They're not the favorites. They're at plus 200 in that same division as the Bucks. Uh, Bulls next up at plus 2,500. So pretty big separation, even early right now for this Cavaliers team with the Bulls, who had a good amount of success last year, as you well know, Justin. And then the Atlanta Hawks are minus 120, pretty far ahead of the Miami Heat at plus 110. Interestingly enough, uh, so there's your odds from Bovada on the Eastern Conference standings. And I want to just go through, let's start at number four. I'll throw it to you. We can just kind of go back and forth if we agree or disagree. And, and I kind of want to know right now, Justin, not, not in terms of if you're believing in this team as like a successful team, but let's talk specifically home court advantage, whether you sure. think the, these teams are going to, hold in that top four spot or if another one of the teams from below them right now at the east i think you're assuming probably bulls 76ers and the miami heat are going to rise from the ashes that they're in right now 76ers at five and six of course they had that james harden injury that we mentioned the heat slow start at four and seven and then um the Bulls right at six and six, so not far behind any of these teams. Uh, and then, of course, you got to consider too if if you believe Jacques Vaughn is going to turn things around in Brooklyn. Uh, the Nets are at four and seven as well, tied with the Heat. So, contenders, pretenders. Let's start at that four spot with the Hawks. Do you see them as a home court advantage team based on what you've seen so far this year? Um, I do not. It's close. It, it really is. Um, I think the easiest way to do this, for me at least, is to kind of eliminate kind of the teams uh, on kind of that um, nine through five spots. So I would say probably probably take out the Wizards, probably take out the Knicks. So taking um, those teams out, I would say I've seen the Bulls play multiple times, and maybe this is my bias, so you know you can get on me on the comments. But I would say <laughs> – the Bulls have a lot of depth, and I think they've been disrespected. I think everybody's been dismissing them just because Lonzo Ball's been hurt. And I like Lonzo Ball. He's a huge part of their team. He is the X factor. However, I do think they have other players that have been stepping up, and they can be a factor in kind of moving into that, the, that fourth position if they stay healthy. And I think with the Hawks, we've seen some inconsistency with them. At the same time, you know, Trey Young is a certified superstar in this league. So – I'm just thinking with stability, honestly, looking at it, and I know I might be jumping ahead, but I just think with the Hawks and Cavaliers, I won't go too much into it, but I would say it's kind of kind of down to those two teams in terms of kind of, okay, those two teams maybe, you know, experience some growing pains and which two teams in the bottom will, you know, take their place. But for me, I think with the Hawks, I've seen some vulnerability from them. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. As we get towards the you know latter part of the season, the the East, while we've been praising the depth and the improvement, a lot of injuries could derail what's going to happen here. I mean, you can't really dismiss the Toronto Raptors as well. So, um, in a nutshell, I think the, the Hawks are probably the most vulnerable. Out of those and players. I think a lot of reliance on Trey Young, obviously, and and I don't know. If over time, I mean, certainly we've seen that get them wins in the regular season before when you have less time to plan for them. We've seen that 
um, work well one year in the playoffs, work uh, not as well in other years. Um, so I, I think I'm with you here in terms of the Hawks being pretenders as a top four seed in the conference. I do think they are going to drop off. I think one of those other teams, if not more, will displace them as we go through. You know, it'd be fun to check back in on this as we may very well do, you know, around All-Star break or even around Christmas to see how things have changed. I'm going to go ahead and take this next one. I think you and I are probably in agreement on it. And the Celtics, I have to say, absolutely are contenders. They are even off to a slower well, not slower than last year, but I think a slower, clunkier start than we would have expected following their run to the NBA Finals. And keep in mind, they also don't have Robert Williams. He's He still needs to return from injury. So I think the Celtics are going to continue to contend, and I think when it's all said and done, they will easily have home court advantage. I'd be surprised if they aren't a top three seed Um to be perfectly honest. So Celtics, I have as contenders, any other thoughts on them or, or disagreement? Um, a little bit of surprise just through kind of the turmoil in the beginning of the season, but true in terms of how the roster is created, the veteran leadership, I think that speaks well to the Celtics being an actual contender to win the championship. Just with a lot of just heat on them that they were struggling. I think they'd be getting constant questions in terms of, you know, the off the court stuff being, a hindrance to their on-court success. So the early great start, I know it's a little bit slower than what they expected, but I think it, this is phenomenal for them just considering what they've been through in the early part of the season. Absolutely. The Cavaliers are eight and two. So Justin, I'm kind of giving you the harder ones here because then mm-hmm. I'm going to end up with the Bucks. Um, <laughs> and I think we can both just get that out of the way. The Bucks are contenders. <laughs> I don't think we need to say much uh, unless you have a strong disagreement. No, no, um, no. But looking, finishing out this top four, the eight and two Cavaliers who have somewhat surprised with at least how quickly it's gelled. I don't think it's a surprise that they've been successful. You and I both liked the Donovan Mitchell move overall, but when it's all said and done, do you see them as a top four seed contenders or pretenders for that? Oh, it's tough because, you know, we're dealing with the team, like you said, that, you know, they're, they're trying to gel and there's, you know, a lot of pressure in terms of, being a elite team in the Eastern conference. And we've seen with Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell becoming a really dynamic backcourt. I think there's a shot for them, maybe this to sneak in in there. I think what we have to watch for is again, what, what are really three teams around my mind? Really it's Brooklyn. They're a huge question mark. They're going to go out of blaze of glory, rebuild, or they can turn it around. I mean, they, you know, with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, that is hard just to count them out and just to say they're finished. That is really difficult just to dismiss them just based on what they can do every single night. And just focusing on even the 76ers with James Harden and with Joel Embiid. I mean, that's another team that could get hot too. And along with their depth, that they are a factor in this. And as well as, again, my bias may be showing here, but Chicago. And look at mm-hmm. Toronto as well. So all these teams could be totally different besides Boston and Milwaukee, to be honest. I mean, I think they're all pretty much on the same level, just given some breaks, injuries, hot streaks. I mean, you just never know. So I think for now, I would put them in the pretender camp, but with an asterisk. Gotcha. Yeah, and I think I'm with you here. I have them as pretenders as well, um, simply because of – the recent history of the franchise has been the past few years to get out to a hot start and then back off. I do think this roster is much more talented than the, any of those past years with Garland and, and Sexton in the backcourt. But I, I think if an injury comes up, I'm not as confident in their depth as some of the other teams to to fill those gaps. So I could see them taking a dip in the standings because of that. But of course, both you and I very pleasantly surprised with them. Um, but yeah, we're we're in lockstep here. So we've got the Hawks and Cavaliers as our pretenders right now. Bucks and Celtics certainly as contenders. Those teams are also two of the top um, title contenders right now by the odds. We're going to do the same exercise quickly in the Western Conference here. So we have, um, in terms of 
our division winner odds again on Bovada. We've got uh, the Nuggets, who are the four seed right now. There's a there's basically a three way tie for second place here. Three teams at seven and three through these first ten plus games, um, and then you've got the Jazz, <laughs> unbelievably almost yeah. at, at that nine and three. Um, so in terms of Odds with the division, the Nuggets are favored <clears throat> minus 130 to win the Midwest. And then the uh, Timberwolves, or I'm sorry, I believe that's Northwest division. Timberwolves are plus 350, Trailblazers plus 350. And then you have the Jazz, even though they're the one seed right now at plus 1,000 for that division. So Vegas predicting uh, a drop-off for yeah. um for the Jazz. Uh, that doesn't surprise me too much. We'll talk about that. The Phoenix Suns are favored to win their division, uh, the Pacific League, minus 140. Then you have the Warriors, plus 300. And the Clippers, who everyone was crazy about early on at plus 300. And then lastly, in the Midwest, you have the Grizzlies favored to win their plus 120 over the Mavericks at plus 150. Um have <laughs> rockets right now plus 50,000. Oh my goodness. Um <laughs> so so let's take a look and um we've talked a lot about the nuggets so I'll let you lead off with them. You are in Denver uh in that area. What do you think of the nuggets as contenders or pretenders for hanging on to a top 4 seed in the west? Uh yeah, they're a contender. Um just seeing Murray returned to seeing um, the Joker being in full form. We talked about Bones Highland. I watched him play twice. They have a lot of depth. I think even Aaron Gordon severely underrated on that team. They have, they're going to be a contender. I think the question is when we get into the the playoffs, is what happens with their depth with injuries and really with the Joker. And correct me if I'm wrong in terms of the. Like, we're talking about NBA finals. We're talking about like Western conference finals. So not like the first or second round of the playoffs, but I think it's fair to say what happens with this Denver Nuggets team when they face, if they, if, if it happens to be that way, a golden state warriors and maybe the Western conference finals, or if they haven't to make it to the NBA finals, if they have to, when they face the Milwaukee bucks who have experience in the NBA finals as well, or the Boston Celtics. I mean, that's going to be a huge question. The finals is different. The intensity is different. Every single game is scrutinized. So I think in that regard, there are some questions with, you know, with that team, I think with the nuggets, they're built for it, but I think in terms of you know, locking down home court, I think they are a, a bona fide contender for sure. I think they're still built for putting points on the board. I don't know yeah. if they're built specifically for playoff defense. That Gordon certainly great. helps them in that in that end, but Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. guys who have to get a good amount of playing time based on what they're paid even and and also their supreme offensive talent. I just don't know that ultimately in the playoffs they can do enough on the defensive end to win that plus minus advantage for how many points that they're able to put on. That's valid. I, yeah. I think that's going to be the long-term question of this team and what yeah. can you do around there? Uh, Jokic also not the greatest rim protector doesn't have to be necessarily, but I don't think he has much help around him on the defensive end. I, I wouldn't say Jokic is a vulnerability defensively against other centers in this league, but you got to have standouts on the defensive end too. And I think it has to be more than just Aaron Gordon. So uh, I agree with you though, a hundred percent. You and I were both high on this Nuggets team coming in this season. Perhaps our bias, we've been high on them for a while, but hey, they got injured. We're, we're trying to see them uh, do something here. We've liked them for a long time and they're just starting to shake the rust off with, with those players. So Agreed. yes, I'm very high on them as contenders. Trailblazers, I'll lead this one off. They are seven and three, uh, listed as the number three, um, th third in this division. Sorry. Um, now keep in mind, I, I mentioned the contenders in the East. So I'll go ahead and mention some other contenders in the West who we haven't mentioned the Mavericks. We've talked about a lot with Luca and how crazy he's playing. The Grizzlies, who were the two seed last year, at seven and four right now. The Warriors, who are four and seven right now, but you'd assume would come back. And the Clippers, who everyone has raved about, they're at six and five right now. But 
most of the media seems to think they were they were making a jump. Uh, I mean, Zach Lowe had them as his NBA Finals pick for the Western sure Conference. Sure uh, oddly enough, to me. Uh, so, long story short, I, I love what the Trailblazers have, have done, but I don't see them hanging on to a top four seed when it comes to getting to the all-star break and beyond and pushing into the playoffs. I do think they will be one of the teams on this list that is bumped from this top four. Uh, I could easily see the Mavericks um, leapfrogging them at some point here. Any disagreement there? Any any staying power they might have that I'm overlooking? Um, just with the Trailblazers, I think it's very interesting to see the return of prominence of Damian Lillard. Yeah, I think the problem is it's just there's so many teams <laughs> at the yeah. bottom that are like legit contenders, and I just think with the Trailblazers roster, I just don't see them staying there. I I know it's going to upset Danny Meringue, <laughs> one of our <laughs> former guests and uh, you know re- contributor um, covering the, the the Portland Trailblazers, and he will will probably have him on this season just to get his insight. But for sure, I just see that the rest of the depth of the West, as it's been in years past. I just don't see them staying in that spot just with, you know, Damian Lillard carrying them alone. Kind of like Cleveland too. I I think if they get an injury, a significant injury to a starter, I'm not as confident in them to be able to make up the difference for that. Um, Two seed finally given you maybe an easy one, maybe not (laughs) the Phoenix suns. They are seven and three right now. Uh, They've had drama with, Oh, I'm blanking on his name right now, who has been holding out in spite of the injury, uh, I believe, to Cam Johnson. Um, salsa dancing with LeBron. You know who I'm talking um, about? Yeah. <laughs> he was on I, the Celtics. He was on Cleveland. I just can't put a name to him. Anyway, I'll uh, find Jay out Crowder? later. There you go. Thank yeah, you. There you go. Um, so he's still holding out, um, even though he's got an opportunity for some more play time right now. Yeah. But Suns are 7-3. and three. What do you think? Are are they contenders? Are they going to hang on there? Is drama going to bring them down or injuries potentially? What do you see for the Suns? A uh, contender. I mean, they've dealt with drama before. I mean, look at the Robert Sarver situation. There's plenty of drama. It kind of years past. Um, and they've been handling it. I mean, this team has been, you know, they've risen from, from the dead. I mean, this is a team that was dismissed in the bubble uh, to being one of the most – to become one of the most um, – top teams in the Western Conference. And I think that's pretty inspiring for the rest of the teams in the rest of the league as well. So I, I see them being a contender when it's all said and done. I think they have some serious questions with, you know, Chris Paul, of course, every single year when we get down to the nitty gritty of like the Western Conference in the playoffs. But overall for now, home court, I think, you know, sticking with the Suns and and the Nuggets, they are going to be bona fide contenders for home court for sure. Yeah, and I think since the bubble, the Suns still have the best record in the NBA um, over the span of those seasons. I also suspect the dominance to continue. I think they've actually had quite a bit of luck with Chris Paul and injuries, so knock on wood that he doesn't get hurt this year for longer. They've had to deal with him sidelined, though, so Devin Booker has experience holding it down. Um, But I see them as legit contenders as well. So not much to add there. Lastly, very excitedly and unexpectedly, one of their three losses, oddly enough to the Rockets. Um, So I was joking back about two weeks ago that the Rockets beat the best team in the NBA when they beat the Utah jazz. I think the jazz were five and oh at that time, the jazz are at nine and three. And to this point, it's still a shocker to me that they have done this well. No disrespect to any of the guys on that roster. There are some talented names, but you just don't have a major star on that roster. Um, a lot of guys have been playing out of their minds, and I do wonder how long they can keep this up. I do wonder if people, as teams get more tape on what they do, if they will be easier to slow down than other teams for lack of a super dynamic player. I mean, I think Sexton can be a problem on the offensive end as as a matchup for sure, but I don't think he's enough that teams have to lose a ton of sleep game planning on this team. So I think they will regress to the mean as we go through, but very excited because it looks like 
if they don't completely implode, uh, they could certainly be a playing team. They could certainly hang on and and keep trying as hard as they are, and with their youth, you know, get some wins, um, and and maybe even <laughs> go above the playing team. I mean, if they were a sixth place, that would be an incredible achievement, in my opinion, for this Jazz team. But I do have them as pretenders in this top four. They don't belong here. Sorry. Get out of here. Bring in the Mavs, the Grizzlies, or the Warriors. Sorry, Jazz. No disrespect intended. Props to what you've done so far. Justin, your thoughts? No, I agree. Not too much to add. Yeah, too much step in the West, too much experience. And, you know, we head into kind of the, the big months where teams make a run. I think that's where you're going to see, you know, your Warriors, Clippers, Memphis, you know, really prop up to the those other two available spots. So yeah, unfortunate for the jazz, but I think there's a lot of room for optimism just in terms of this quick start. Um, I don't think it's a, they're a pretender in terms of just, you know, missing the playoffs. Um, I think they're going to be, they're going to make some noise in terms of the play in tournament and kind of the lower part of the Western conference. So we're on the same page as that for sure. And potentially to Danny Ainge's dismay yeah, with, sure. uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I do wish them good draft karma, for coming in and trying this hard and competing. I think that's awesome to see because yeah, everyone, it was, it was just kind of the foregone conclusion. The jazz are going to tank. It's going to be a tank job. They're just going for Wemby or scoot. That hasn't been the case. They've been continuously competing and I give them tons of props for that. I oh, agreed. agree.